Okay, now we're going to look at a probability with a tree diagram. Flipping three coins probably get at least two heads. Now, there are many ways we can pick up a probability. There's two or three come to mind directly. One would be empirically. You just start flipping coins. There's two heads. So, so far I'm one out of one trial. Look at that. Three heads. That's a lucky guy. Two out of two. 100%. Nope. So now we're two out of three. And so on. You get the idea. We do this over and over again. Two out of four. So assuming we had fair flips, we would get a pretty good approximation to the probability relatively quickly. But now we're going to look at doing it through an, uh, a theoretical method using a tree diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip a coin. I get either heads or tails. And the probability is 0.5 for either one of those events. Then from either one, a completely independent flip, I get heads or tails again. And now we're down to our third flip. Third and final flip, we get heads or tails a third time. You can probably draw a prettier, more symmetric tree than I do. We've got our third flip with heads or tails, and of course the probability of every one of these things is 0.5. And since they are independent, I can multiply. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.125 for every one of my answers, my outcomes here. So the way we read this tree, this is the event of getting a tail, a tail, and a head, or in this case, head, tail, head, or which, whichever letters you come across on the way down. So the probability of getting at least two heads. Well, which one does these have two heads? Well, this has three heads, so that certainly counts. Head, head, tails has two heads. Head, tail, head also has two heads. Head, tail, tail does not. Tail, head, head, two heads on the way there. Tail, head, tail, no. Tail, tail, head, and so on. None of these two. These are mutually exclusive events. And they're equally likely outcomes, as it turns out. Although in our next tree, that won't be the case. We can add these probabilities together, and I see the answer is 0.5. 50% of the time, half the time, I'll get at least two heads, two or three heads. And the other half the time, I'll get zero or one head. So it makes sense. Now let's try one where the probabilities are not equal on every branch of the tree. Rolling three dice, what's the probability at least two of them bigger than five? Okay, none. Not too lucky on that roll. There we go, I got one. So, so far it's 50%. Oh, look at that, 665, a lucky roll. So I'm two out of three, and so on. You could empirically come up with a probability if you did that a hundred times and kept track of your results. Now, individually, I see a six, I see a five, two out of the six, or in other words, one-third of the time I should get a number that's bigger than five. Uh, it's supposed to be five or bigger, so the way I'm interpreting this problem, obviously just bigger than five would be six. So we're going to say five and six. That's the one we're counting as a success. So looking at my tree, one-thirds of the time I'll get a success. Two-thirds of the time I will not. So we're going to draw the same tree, only now the probabilities are a little different. Oops, success goes there, one third goes here, two thirds there. Last success, one third, not success, two thirds, so on. Keep reversing where I want them, one third here. Not success here, two-thirds. Okay, so you can definitely take your time and draw a better tree than I'm doing. The notion is the probability is one-third because there are five and six. Two of the six sides of the dice are considered success. We want to get two of them, five or lar larger, out of our three rolls. So the probabilities we're interested in are going to be success, success, success. That's three. That's certainly big, more than two. Here we've got two. Success, no success there. And no success. So the same same ones that worked for the two, uh, two heads on the coins or two tails, whatever we were doing. If we multiply these up, one third times one third is one ninth, one twenty seventh. One third times one third is one ninth times two thirds is two twenty seventh. So we're going to see this one twice as often as we see this one. And this one here we will see four out of twenty seven times. Now let's make sure I got my one third there. Okay, so two. Success was one third, so two thirds times one third times two thirds, so four out of twenty seven. 
2 thirds times 2 thirds, 4 out of 9, 4 out of 27 here, and 8 out of 27. So we should see dice that do not have any 5s or 6s, 8 out of 27 times compared to all 5s and 6s, 1 out of 27, 8 times as often we should see this event than this event here. So these are certainly not equally likely outcomes here. Nevertheless, this is our tree for the dice for this problem. And if my success is getting a 5 or 6, the ones, the ones we label as S, I'm going to have one right here. That's three successes. I'm going to have one right here. I've got two of, two of my dice showing the proper numbers. Let's see. Success, no success. That works. Two successes. This one does not. And no success, success will be the last. So we add these numbers together. One and two is three, five, seven out of 27 times. A lot less likely than what we saw for the coin problem that we just did.